Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Um, I've put a wire antenna up uh, recently, and um, the feed point impedance is quite high. So I thought I'd uh, I'd make a matching uh, transformer to uh, to bring it down to something that wasn't too much of a mismatch to the uh, uh, to the coax. Um, just so that I could sort of nip it in, if you like, with a little manual ATU at the uh, at the radio end. Um, actually, I might draw that for you in a sec, so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. It works quite well. Now, um, you've probably seen these things uh, in uh, in books. Uh, it's a nine to one, un un, so it's unbalanced to unbalanced. I'm uh, I've always believed that uh, you know antenna matching transformers should match the disposition of the particular amateur. Now, uh, when you see them drawn like this, they look a bit odd. But if you see the same thing drawn like that, it looks a little more obvious what it's doing. So it looks an awful lot like an auto transformer, doesn't it? When you, uh, when you look at it like that. So that's a 9 to 1 anun. And it's each one of those windings, each one of these windings is 10 turns. I got this out of a book somewhere or off the net, I can't remember where now. Um, I did it some time ago. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And I've left the uh, repeater running in the background as usual, apologies for that. And the dots tell us where the ends of the windings are. So when you get the three, three lengths of wire, long enough to make the 10 turns on your toroid get a bit of uh, hook up wire or a bit of solder and just wind it around your toroid 10 times so you can get the length leave a little bit extra of course because you've got to do some solder uh, connections <coughs> oh, excuse me um, so you hold the three wires between your fingers and then you just wind them onto your toroidal core and you can see sort of how that's connected together as I say it looks a little more it's easier to understand when you look at it like that. Now this is a 9 to 1 anun. If you wanted to make a 9 to 1 balun, uh, all you would do is swap these two connections over. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. So the inner would go there and the outer goes there. And then you've got a 9 to 1 balun. Okay, so what does one of these things actually look like? Um, let's see if I can get a background that will uh, show it up a little bit better. Um, ah, here we go. Do my bit for the planet and go green. There we are, and also protect the board. Excuse me. Here is one I prepared earlier. Um, I wanted this to be able to take uh, full legal power without too much bother, so I use one mill building wire. Now I know that, um, and under here is uh, some solder joints. I couldn't really put a heat shrink on there, it, was, uh, it, it would get too hot on that small piece of wire there. I just shrink down before I could get it in, into position. <coughs> Now I know these sort of test wires are supposed to be um, as short as possible. So I've got a pot here set to 450 ohms. There we go. Which is connected across the output. So we can get that in shot. There we go. So that wire there, <laughs> these wires are a bit on the long side. But I've jiggled them all around, it doesn't seem to make any difference or a significant difference anyway. So there's my 450 ohm output. There's my common ground, which is this, which is this longer lead here. Hang on. This longer lead here. So that's got two connections on it, one to the pot, one side of the pot, and the other one to my uh, antenna analyzer. And where's my output? There we go. There's my, there's my 50 ohm output which is the other wire there. 
So, with a 450 ohm resistor across the output and my deluxe Anon, um, I should be able to see uh, 50 ohms if it's working correctly. So let's have a look. Let's get the pot out of the way. Let's get the antenna analyzer. Did I say analyzer? I've been watching too much American YouTube. Analyzer with an S. <laughs> okay. Anyone that does lawn bowls will be cringing looking at this. I hope I don't give you nightmares. Or uh, anyone that plays snooker, of course. Uh, right, okay. Which is sort of like Paul, but um, a little more complicated. Uh, now, these, uh, this core, um, I thought I had some. I managed to get four. I managed to get four of these cores for two bucks at the Hamfest. And I thought, great, these are just the right size for going over LDF 550 coax, which is the fairly thick coax, about an inch in diameter, uh, to make a mag loop, to make a, a feed arrangement for a mag loop. And I thought, two bucks, can't go wrong, I'll give them a, I'll give them a go. Unfortunately, <clears throat> what I found was, let's see if I can, let's see if I can prop that up. Maybe I'll prop it up with those cores. There we go. So if I go to right, and you can see that. So we've got centre frequency, CF, just below the uh, the bottom left of the uh, the corner of the display. There, CF is 1.8 megs. So that's top band. Then you can see uh, the sweep width, and you can see the SWR, and of course on the right-hand side, Z, the impedance. Look pretty flat, and it's saying the SWR is 1.3 to 1, and the impedance is 55 ohms. So I could use that on top band, no problem at all. So let's go to 80 meters. 3.6 megs, there we go. And the SWR has gone to 1.7, and the impedance is now 62 ohms. So, not so good, but you know, could work with that. And then we get to 40 meters, 2.6 to 1, and 89 ohms. As soon as we get to 10 megs, 4.1, 135 ohms. 20 meters. 14.2 megs, SWR 7 to 1, 254 ohms. <laughs> there we go, 21 megs. I hope that's focused okay. Oh, you can actually hear the um, the antenna analyzer on the uh, on the scanner in the background. It's obviously got, obviously got some harmonics on, 2 meters. 21.1 uh, megs. SWR is greater than 9, impedance is greater than 350 ohms. 24 megs, again, greater than 9 SWR. Greater than 9 to 1, impedance is greater than 350 ohms. 28 megs, again. And 52 megs, as you probably expect. Absolute rubbish. So, there we go. So when you're when you're doing something like this <coughs> and you want to make a, a toroidal uh, antenna matching transform or something like that it's very important to get the right core material that's obviously why I managed to get four of these rather nice looking cores Two dollars. Now, if I was uh, if I was a, a medium wave broadcast station, I'd have been blissfully happy with my purchase. Uh, these things would run on medium wave, no problem at all. But um, for the handbands, yeah, uh, above uh, above one point eight megs, nah, not really. So there we go. So that's physically what the um, nine to one Anun looks like. Uh, there's probably better examples out there, but that's uh, that's my one. 
and uh, another reason I used the building wire of course was I didn't have to wrap tape around the core now you can get that very very nice very thin self amalgamating tape from the local hardware sh uh, store that um, I'm trying to talk American now um, that's ideal for wrapping around these cores because it's just so thin that uh, you can get it on uh, quite small cores um, <clears throat> but uh, so there we go and uh, just turn the antenna analyzer off and get that out of the way that piece of garbage but uh, you've got to remember that uh, after all this is amateur radio it's all about playing around with radio and seeing what you can do with what so I'll just leave you with that again there you go the circuit diagram of it the 9 to 1 unun. -un. remember reverse those connections if you want a 9 to 1 bun and there you go and there's uh, there's what it looks like in a, uh, a more easy to understand I think anyway less confusing fashion well as always I hope you found that interesting uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time